No. No. Are you like that? <laughs> Good God. I hope not. Are you on the internet like that? Do you go looking for trouble in all the right places? Are you one of those people that like to say no more than you say yes? I've been there. I've done that. Sometimes I still do. I make doo-doo. <laughs> I decided not to uh, be doing advertising, but that I wanted to break down or, okay, I didn't want to. God, he always invades my day, you know. Have you ever noticed that about God? It's kind of funny, you know. Here you are, you know, you've got all these ideas and plans, you know, and you got your own schedule, you got your own thing going, you know, and your life is just going the way you planned it. And all of a sudden God says, excuse me, I'm going to uh, take over now and move you someplace else. <laughs> and you say, excuse me, I don't think so. And then God does it. And you go, but Lord, I, I had such a wonderful job. I had all these better events, you know, and everything was going wonderful. And God says, no one. <laughs> you were distracted. You weren't paying attention. I got your attention now, don't I? So today, God took me to hats. You know, hats that breaking down the stereotype of your typical, oh, you know, you got to wear a suit and tie. You got to be out there, you know, like, oh, you know, you got to have a fancy studio. You can't have, you know, like all this stuff, plants, a living room, just a computer, you know, a little camera, you know, kind of like, you know, making these things for God, you know, because God doesn't use the poor and needy, you know, to minister to the high and mighty. <laughs> Are we in for some surprises? But that in breaking down stereotypes, God told me, you know, when I was recording Proverbs 1, I, I do it early in the morning. So I thought, oh, you know, I just threw on a hat and said, you know, it's kind of a military hat, kind of a khaki thing. You know, and I said, well, it's not really a military hat. It's more like a hunter's hat. But um, I thought, well, you know, Lord, what do you think about, you know, wearing hats today? Because I just don't feel like, you know, shaving. I don't feel like, you know. Jumping in the shower and getting all cleaned up. And Lord said, jump in the shower. I went, oh, okay. <laughs> but we're still going to wear hats today because he did tell me, but do break down the stereotype. Because I got to thinking, you know, how many times do you see, you know, on Christian television, anybody wearing a hat and talking to you? And then I thought about how many Sunday mornings do you actually see somebody up there with a hat on? Oh, don't put a hat on. That's not holy. Oh, well, we better put a kippah and a tallies, right? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> oh, please. You come as you are, you know. And I think we need to get back to that realization that, you know, it's okay to not wear my Sunday morning best because God wants you undressed before him, not redressing yourself in some righteousness with, oh, we look holy. Holy. I don't think so. So, needless to say, we're being real. And in getting real, we have daily light. From the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, your words were heard. From the first day you set your heart to understand and, uh-oh, to chasten yourself before your God. Have you ever thought of that? Have you ever done that? Do you chasten yourself or do you wait for God to chasten you? Hmm. Is he chasing you? <laughs> you see, chasten in the King Jameth is to afflict yourself, to kind of like go, I could add a V8. <laughs> it's more like denying yourself taking up your cross and following Jesus. So, in a lot of respects, I think that the Catholic Church may have had a better grasp on some of it than maybe the Protestant Church does. Or maybe some of the Protestant Church has a better handle on it than the 
fundamentalists do because after all we know fundamentalist christianity is all about what i can get not what i deny or is it so you see have you chastened yourself at some point in time and you might want to consider that it's actually located in dan dan in daniel yeah that's an abbreviation dan the book of dan in daniel 10 12 and you need to recognize that at times we need to deny ourselves something in order to give to god something that costs us sometimes that might be your life thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabits eternity whose name is holy i dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. How do you feel contrite? How do you feel humble? When you admit what you really are, you're just a sinner like everyone else. You're nobody special. You're just someone that Jesus died for. So whenever you get all these Christian messages that always tell you to, hey, you're special, you're Oh, build up your self-esteem. Can I tell you something? You can build it up, but God's going to break it down. Because what we are is sinners saved by grace. There's nothing really particularly holy about us. The only thing that's holy about us is the fact that God chose us. And that God saved us. And that God wants to make us into His image. You always got to recognize where you come from. Churches sinners saved by grace in there but for the grace of god go i that you would be humble about who you are knowing full well that you've blown it many times whether it be in marriages and i said marriages or how you're treating your wife today or how you really think about your husband or what you are hiding from god and what you won't say that you've done are doing so because that's true about all of us we need to be a little humble before God and contrite you know kind of like okay maybe I'm not as you know holy roller as I think I am maybe it's not Satan that's beating me down but God chastising me to recognize what I am so I know who he is, and then I'm glad for what he's done. I don't think all the times that it's all happy, happy, you know. Sometimes it's like, you gotta know who you are in order to recognize what he's done for you. When you do, then God says, you will be with me in heaven, not beaten down in hell. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, that will not despise. Though the Lord be high, yet hath he respect unto the lowly, but the proud he knows afar off. You see, the people that are out there running around, you know, on stage with their glory aren't the ones that God are paying the most attention to. People that are backstage that don't get seen, don't get heard, and don't get known, they may have more of a gift than your favorite pastor out there in front of the audiences. They may have more of a calling than that great evangelist or televangelist you think you see. One of the things that impressed me a lot about Chuck Smith at one point in time was partly Though people that may have encountered him may not think so, I think so. What's his humility? There are times where he said, you know, don't mistake us pastors who are up front as though we're going to be in the front of the pack in heaven. We'll probably be last. But that those who sat at our teachings will be first. For the Lord loves the humble and the meek and the lowly. And you know, I think in Christianity today, maybe we need to hear that more. 
maybe we need to recognize that the mega church isn't going to be the first church in heaven, but the last one. Because that poor pastor that's out there struggling just to make ends meet, that might be just, you know, humbly submitting to the inner city ministry that only has maybe five people in his home Bible study, but he's just trusting the Lord and God told him to do it. That even though he may have come from some huge, great enterprise, he was willing to let go of that in order to touch five lives or maybe one life because you see Jesus only had 12 disciples he didn't have millions think about that humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time because God resists the proud but gives grace unto the humble submit yourselves therefore to God Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Humble yourself. Think of that. It's not just bow down. It's not just, you know, stick your face in the ground. It's know that humility that you recognize what you are and how you failed and how you need God and how you are just tenderized by the very fact that God should humble himself to touch someone like you. Thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon your name. Give ear, O Lord, unto my prayer and, unto, and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon you and you will answer me. For when we are humble, even if we were in prosperity, when we are humble, when we are in poverty, when we are humble, when we are in no need as well as need, then God will hear us. But you see, the proud, they will be humbled. And it will happen to them one way or another. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Understanding what the will of the Lord is, it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. I always think of that scripture and then I think, boy, how many times have you ever heard a pastor have to get up and say, we really need Sunday school volunteers. We really need help in our nursery, you know, during the service. We have a program where we rotate the teachers round and round and round they go so they don't know whoever it is that's going to be there the next week. Have you ever thought that it might be your calling? If you're a mother? I think that there ought to be a lot more mothers inside Sunday school. Then they know how to teach children at home. Do you ever think that maybe homeschooling ought to be part of church schooling? And church schooling begins on Sunday morning? Hmm. Now there's an idea. Sunday school to homeschool. Or homeschool to Sunday school. Wow. Maybe God has a calling and a responsibility that we've forsaken in our families. This is the will of God, even your sanctification, that he no longer should live the rest of his lifetime in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. What is God's will for your life? Do you know? Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness. Be ye holy, for I am holy. I, Jesus, said, whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister and my mother. Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken unto him as a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. The world passes away in the lust thereof, but he that does the will of God abideth forever. You know, sometimes the will of God can be as simple as wearing a hat. Sometimes humbling yourself might be as simple as wearing t-shirts and not shaving and going before millions on camera. Sometimes being humble might just be admitting, hey, I'm a sinner just like you. Sometimes it just might be 
being real with your God and letting God be real with you. If you do, then the daily light is a matter of you coming to the light. For you're not ashamed to admit you need grace and mercy and forgiveness today, as we all do.